Having made the rather tedious process of installation of both Elasticsearch and Kibana rather easy on our Windows as well as Linux machine uh, using Docker Compose, let us now see what are the various ways of connecting to our Elasticsearch cluster. So I'll quickly head to my browser and in the address bar, I will type localhost 5601. And we can see that Kibana is loading up. Uh, on the Kibana screen, we would scroll a little bit down and we will click on console. So it says that skip curl and use this JSON interface to work with your data directly. So we'll click on console and here we see that our console has opened. The first thing to understand over here is that Elasticsearch is based on the REST protocol and it uses REST for all of its communications. So I hope everyone who is watching this has like a little bit of a basic uh, rudimentary level familiarity with REST. If not, you can check out the link in the description below for a video I made on both HTTP as REST. It's a small video which explains the concepts of HTTP and REST. And for the same, you can click the I button above. Having put that behind us, now I will quickly list the three ways in which we can interact with our Elasticsearch cluster. The first way is to use Kibana. This is the Kibana UI and I'll be showing you very shortly how we can use a Kibana UI to send REST calls to our Elasticsearch cluster. The second way would be say with the REST API or or say curl. So we will use the curl utility in Linux to send the HTTP request, the REST request to the Elasticsearch cluster and get our results. And the third way to do the same would be through a client library. So this is like uh, interacting with Elasticsearch by means of code and client library can be anything say Python or Golang or Java and so on. Let us see the first method now which is using Kibana. So I have written a very basic uh, rest get call over here to get me all the aliases. No need to worry if you don't understand what is aliases off the top of my head. I will be explaining as we proceed through the video. So uh, perhaps I should erase this and type it all over again. So we are sending a get request to our uh, Elasticsearch server and here you can also see that it is missing a URL. So the URL that we will give us is underscore and you can see the autocomplete. It's so cool. That's why using Kibana is the best way. And I can say underscore alias and then I can click on this button right here which is send request. So what happens when we send the request? We do get some response. So what is an alias? Uh, essentially, our Elasticsearch system comprises of many indexes. And here we can see we have around six of these indexes. Now, each indexes can, can be given a, a user-friendly name or an other name. Just like we give aliases to people or things, we can give aliases to our indices and here this command tells me that this particular index has so and so alias this one has so and so aliases and in this case the alias is empty dot kibana underscore one index has an alias called dot kibana so we understood how to use kibana to interact with elastic search now let us see how we can do the same using rest api and curl one more advantage that kibana gives us is i can just click on this screwdriver over here and I can say copy as curl. After copying the request from Kibana, I would just simply head over to my terminal and paste it in here. So what have we got here? So we have got curl, which is a command line utility, which helps us interact with the URLs. We have got the method, which is the get method, similar to what we had in Kibana. And we have the URL. So in Kibana, we were not able to see this part of the URL, but because it was being added over there implicitly. So if I come out here and hit enter, 
then I can see that I get the same JSON, but uh, it does not look as pretty. So for doing that, what we can do is we can just go ahead here and add a pretty flag and press enter and it will give us a prettified JSON output. For a couple of you, it might not work this way, but we might have to replace the elastic search with something called localhost and then press enter and the commands will work the same way. And last but not the least, we have various examples of client libraries where we can simply install the libraries and we can write some code like this and interact with Elasticsearch. This is an example of the Python Elasticsearch client. We have the Java REST client, the low level and the high level REST client to interact with Elasticsearch. We have one for Golang, the official Golang client for Elasticsearch. And here also we interact with Elasticsearch by means of code. For the sake of this tutorial series, we won't be diving mostly into any of these languages because we will work in a very language agnostic way and we will try to interact with the Elasticsearch cluster only via REST. And for that, I feel using Kibana is by far the best method because it is really convenient. We don't have to prefix the URLs over here and we can anyways create the curl request through Kibana. This will be it for this short video where we saw that we interact with uh, our Elasticsearch cluster using REST calls. And there are three ways in which we can do the same, which is using Kibana, using directly the REST API via curl, or using a client, which in any case under the hood will be using the REST API. If you found this video helpful, do give it a thumbs up. And if you find the content of my channel helpful, please do not forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.